For today's episode, I'm excited to welcome as our guest, Peter Nowicki, COO of Arctic Digital Mining. A native of Chicago and graduate of Indiana University, Peter spent 22 years at the Chicago Board of Trade as a floor trader specializing in financial and commodity futures. In 2017, he began dedicating his efforts to blockchain technologies. And in 2019, Peter left the traditional markets to become co-founder of Arctic Digital Mining, a blockchain-based gold tokenization strategy. I think you're going to find today's episode really interesting. How can we tokenize the value of gold while it's still in the ground? So pour a cup of coffee or tea or pour something on the rocks and let's dive in. All right, Pete. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the rocks. We're, we're really excited to have you. What are you drinking today? Uh, well, since it's, it's still early, I got a, um, it's a drink called Axio. It's a, um, it's like a nootropic, I guess. It's an energy oh. drink my wife got me on. And so it's, it's like a, it's high in like niacin and B and caffeine and uh, it's delicious. I love it. Um, comes in these little packets. So I, I, she's got me off the morning coffee and now I'm on Axio. But I got, I got something else just in case because I don't, wasn't really sure how the conversation was going to go. Yeah. I did bring in some rye whiskey from Vail, Colorado. This is uh, 10th Mountain Rye Whiskey. Oh, and so I got a glass set aside for that. Perfect. And so if the conversation if it starts going into mining and, and gold stocks and how we're not making any money, I'm going to pull that out. That's, that's my reason. It's depressing. Yeah, exactly. Love it. It starts getting depressing. With you. Okay, what do you got? What are you drinking? All right. Well, I, I should have had a Celsius because that's my latest favorite energy drink. And my colleague, Jeff Scanlon, who a lot of our listeners are familiar with, she also loves Celsius and told me that you can buy it at Costco now. So I still have to do that. But um, today, since we're having a slightly spicy conversation about digital mining, um, I've got ghost pepper tequila. I don't know if anybody out there likes spicy margaritas or likes a little bit of heat with their cocktails, but we, my husband and I, we boat and spend a lot of time on the water and this ghost pepper tequila um, just is phenomenal for drinks when you're kind of, when you're out and about, right. if you need a little bit of heat. Love it. So if the conversation gets hot and spicy, <laughs> that's what I'll do. <laughs> Very good. Awkward. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll not disappoint. I love 10th Mountain Whiskey. They do some great stuff. So oh, I'm a fan. Really? Now, how do you how do you know it? Uh, well, my husband is former Army, military, special forces. And uh, so, yeah, when I started getting into bourbon, a few friends recommended it. So every time I go to the Beaver Creek Precious Metals Conference, that's what I order when I'm in Beaver Creek is 10th Mountain. Yeah. It's hard. And there you have it. Look it's at toast. that. Yeah. But yeah, love it. Yeah, very cool. Well, love it. I do too. With that, um, so explain, Pete, how did you end up where you are? Like, how did you end up doing what you do? I, I'm excited to share this story with our listeners. Yeah, right on. So, so I grew up in Chicago, and I was a trader at the CME Group, uh, Chicago Board of Trade, for 22 years. That was my, um, you know, my professional path. Um, you know, so I spent all of my time in financial markets. Um, 2017 comes around and, um, you know, interest rates are at zero. There's no volatility. Um, I'm going out of my mind. I'm driving my wife nuts. You know, we're, we're both talking about, you know, what else should I be doing with my life? And, and everything at that time was like blockchain, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you know, all these ICOs were coming out. And I had a number of my friends who I was trading with who got up and left and went into the blockchain space. And so I'm like, you know, I, I should I should figure out what's going on over there. So I started learning everything I could about blockchain, and uh, it's just fascinating. I, you know, I'm not like a blockchain techie or a Bitcoin, you know, purist or anything like that. But I'm just fascinated by all of it. Um, so I just started learning what I could, and right around the same time, I, I meet uh, these two gold miners from um, who, who live in my town, Dave Young and Michael Berry. And, and these guys, um, they have an 8,500 acre gold mine outside of Nome, Alaska. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I traded gold forever, um, but I, you know, I didn't know really much of, you know, where it comes from or how they get it or anything. And so, um, so we started talking and um, they tell me that they have 2 million ounces in a global resource. Mm -hmm. 
And at that time, like, I have no idea, like, what a Yeah, like, one of those were. So, so, right. So, so, t- and, and of course, like, you know, as every lay person does, when someone says they have 2 million ounces, you know, you go to your calculator and you find out, like, you know, at that time, gold was like $1,200 an ounce. I'm like, oh my God, you guys have like $2.4 billion, like, sitting in the ground, you know, in Alaska. And, and I'm like, so you guys are like billionaires, right? And they like looked at each other like, uh, no, we were actually going to ask you for money, if, you know, <laughs> see if you could, you know, help us fund, yeah. you know, the, ex- the, 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 the extraction. And I'm like, well, wh- you know, what do you mean? I'm like, wait, if you have 2 million ounces of gold and it's at $1,200, you know, and you know, the gold is there, mm-hmm. like, that's not like a tier one asset. Like you can't go to like a bank and like get a collateralized loan or, or something off of that $2.4 billion. And they're like, eh, it doesn't work that way. And I was like, oh my God, like, how does it not work right. that way? So that's kind of how it started. And, and so we started talking more about it. And like I said, interest rates were at zero. And I said to them, look, I, I, I'm just learning about this blockchain stuff, but I really think that your answer might be found in blockchain, you know, this to- tokenized strategy. And I just said, you know, let me follow you guys around and let me see what I can learn about, about what you guys do, learn more about blockchain. And I think we're going to find your answer there. Yeah. And so that started our partnership and, you know, we've been at it ever since. So that's where we're at. Very cool. Yeah. Well, so do you ever have this issue where I, especially since I'm in South Florida, which is a big like crypto, um, you know, Bitcoin, like, you know, Miami in particular, yeah. huge kind of yeah. of that universe. When I meet people out and about and they're like, oh, so what do you do for work? And I say, well, I work in mining. They're like, oh, like, which, which crypto do you? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, like the actual <laughs> right, right, mining right. of rocks. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's funny that, that you know, the similarities too, right? Bringing it up. Yeah, so Miami is a hub for this kind of stuff. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of similarities, but um, there's a lot of overlay too. Um, I mean, you know, so let's just talk about that, right? Yeah. Just the, the background of Bitcoin purists and mining purists, mm-hmm. right? And like or gold miners, for instance. So you get gold miners on one side and you get, um, you know, uh, crypto miners on the other side. Both are like inherently the most distrusting people in the world. Yeah. Right? The, the like they have like totally, you know, everybody's like anti-government. Yeah. And, you- like I, all I need is my Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just give me Bitcoin, uh, gold and, you know, a gun, farmland and I'm fine. Yeah. Um, so, so like it is, it is, it is incredible then to, to like overlap those two, Mm -hmm. um, and, and to, you know, be in the space where I have found that, um, that, you know, throughout this, this whole process, like our target audience is, are not Bitcoin, uh, enthusiasts and they're not gold miners. You know, both of them have their own set of, of, you know, what they, what they consider value. Um, and so really, um, fortunately for us the people that we're after actually make up the largest percentage of, of, you know, the investing population, which is people who, who kind of see the value in digital assets, digital securities, kind of get the idea of a digital currency, but just really wish it was backed by something like backed by something physical. Um, Whereas, you know, most people can't wrap their head around Bitcoin, but everybody, you know, for the most part can wrap their head around gold. Mm -hmm. Now where gold loses it is like its functionality, Mm -hmm. right? Because, where people, you know, anybody who's like anti-gold is like, well, what are you going to do with your gold? Like, it just sits there in a vault. Like, you don't do anything with it. You can't, you know, can't go to Starbucks with it. You can't buy a car. You can't shop on Amazon. I mean, those are all really good points. So bridging this gap between, you know, gold and Bitcoin, you know, now you can start bringing in utility to gold. And that's where this gets really exciting. So that's where our, our you know, our, our model is shaped up. So to back it up a little bit for listeners yeah. who may not be familiar, maybe they're, they're tuning in to like, listen to like, you know, rock mining conversations. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit what digital mining is and how, how in your case, you're applying yeah. it to like the regular mining industry. Yeah. So, so let me just, I guess the, probably the best way to do it for your listeners is, is to zero in on, on what we're doing in Alaska and how, how this works with this digital mining. So, so first off, like the tokenization strategy in, in and of itself is basically you create a digital representation of a physical asset, mm-hmm. 
right? So, um, you know, when I was, when I first got married, you know, we got some stock certificates, right? And like, that's how we owned, you know, Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And so, so when I wanted to sell those, I had to take that physical, you know, piece of paper and, and send it to, you know, my brother, who was my broker at the time, and, and, and he would, you know, sell it for me. Now we don't do stuff like that, right? We don't, we no longer use stock certificates. We no longer use a hard physical asset. We actually use a digital representation. And, and so that, you know, you, you have a Schwab account or whatever, and, you know, you can trade this stuff without having stock certificates, right? Everything is now digital. Mm -hmm. And so, so moving along, you know, you can do that. You can, you can basically do any uh, uh, physical asset and, and create a digital representation of it. So you could take a painting and make a digital representation of it. And, and so what people have done is now is they, they made a digital representation of gold in a vault. Mm -hmm. So there's a group called Paxos Gold, right? I'm not sure if you're familiar no. with them, but Paxos has taken, um, so they have uh, gold bars held in a vault and they have made digital uh, security tokens or actually they're not really security tokens, they're just tokens representing ownership of those bars of gold, mm -hmm. all right? So, so what's really cool is that you can own the token and that token represents your ownership of this bar of gold. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you, can, you can trade that token, you can transfer it to other people and that, gold, that, that token that you own because it's encrypted and on the blockchain is tied directly to that bar of gold held in that vault in Switzerland. And so that, that token can trade all over the world. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, whether it ends up in Singapore or United States or wherever else, it doesn't matter. But because that bar of gold never has to leave mm -hmm. that vault. Does that make sense? Yeah. And these, these systems are tied in, I would assume, with kind of the more traditional systems where dealers would trade physical bullion like all the, the kind of, so it, it works within that system. It's just a digital mechanism. Yeah, exactly. To... It's exactly what it is. So that digital me mechanism can, can prove your ownership of a, of a specific asset. And so, so that's okay. really cool, right? So that, that's where the blockchain comes in because it, it, it can, um, you know, identify and, and uh, make this, um, you know, uh, basically a digital fingerprint of ownership of, of an asset. So, so we're taking that same uh, concept and bringing it up to Alaska. Um, and so we're, we're applying it to the Alaskan uh, gold reserves. And so the basic idea in this is, is the, our, our model hinges on the idea that, that gold simply doesn't have a utility. Now, I know gold miners yeah. get upset by this because actually, I mean, it's not exactly true. Gold has thousands of utilities. It's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. it makes it so valuable. But the reality is the 21st century utility of gold is going to be the store value. You know, we're not using mm -hmm. gold. We're not, you know, in, in many industrial applications anymore. The majority of all extracted gold simply gets stored in an underground vault. And so, so basically, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, we're digging up parts of Alaska we're, we're to find the gold. Uh, then we're, we're, you know, melting it down, refining it, shipping it overseas and putting it in a vault somewhere. And it's then is going to sit in a store of value, and that uh, store of value then is going to be used to back a digital currency or to you know just do nothing basically. It's going to sit on the shelf, and so the, the basic idea of that if if that is going to be the the 21st century of utility of gold, which is going to be the store of value, do we really need to extract the gold in order to do that? So, I mean, mm. Emily, you're a geologist, right? I mean, so you write 43101 yeah. report. So, so I got to learn everything I could about these things. And, and so they spend millions of dollars, you know, testing the land, uh, you know, drill hole logs and all this data and to find the gold. And, and so, you know, you have different levels of, of, you know, verification, you have different, you know, difficult, uh, different levels of, uh, of certainty. Um, but the reality mm -hmm. is, is that at the end of the day, you have a really good idea of how much gold is in any tested area. So if we know the really? gold is there and it doesn't have a utility, does it really need to be extracted? Do we, do we really need to take it out of the ground, out of the place where it's already protected and move it overseas and put it underground somewhere else where we have to pay armed guards to protect it? it it's already 
<laughs> right? It's already protected. It's yeah. buried beneath 80 feet of Alaskan, you know, tundra. So, so the idea said, but you know, we're spending all of this money where we're, we are, you know, people are going out of business trying to find this gold um, and, and trying to extract it. And then we're getting pressed up with all of these ESG concerns, right? So now every mining mm -hmm. company has, has, you know, especially in North America, right? We have the highest level of standards of, of you know, ESG compliance, um, environmental concerns, everything. So it's to say, well, well, wait a minute. This would address all of those concerns if we simply just left it in the ground. So the idea right. is now we have the geological expertise capable of finding the gold. And now we have the mm -hmm. financial technologies capable of tokenizing the gold, capable of making a digital representation of it. So we never, so we didn't have both of these at simultaneously before, but now we do. So now enter into the, the next generation of gold investors are, are, are there's the, the younger generation buying tokenized gold reserves basically in Alaska. And, and in, instead of electing to keep their gold in a vault in Switzerland or at the Dallas fed, um, their gold is kept in the ground in Alaska. No, I think it's such an interesting concept because I, you know, when my friends were all buying different cryptocurrencies and, and talking about all this, I would just tell them, you know, I'm in mining and gold is the original token. Yeah. Right. Like I've worked all over the world and emerging markets, anywhere you go globally. Sure. Like you might, you can't use it to buy stuff on Amazon, but you can do a lot internationally with gold anywhere you go in the right. world. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I love to buy jewelry and carry around. Right. You know, I mean, like you, you really need something, you yep. know, a, a gold watch is going to go a long way is if you, yep. if you need to buy something. <laughs> um, so I, I find it really interesting that basically you're saying the value of the gold is actually not related to the cost and the risk of extraction. The value of the gold is the same yeah. if it's still in the ground in natural form and in whatever level of, um, you know, grade essentially that it is naturally, we don't have to take it out and concentrate right. it into a bar just to make it tradable because now we have the token yep. that makes it tradable. Yep. Even pulling it out. Is that kind of the, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, very well said. So that's just it, right? So if you think about gold mining, right, why is, I mean, let's, so we've, you know, so for the sake of discussion, we'll just keep it in Alaska. You know, why, why, you know, why such discrepancy uh, over the price of unextracted gold in Alaska? Why are so, some gold mines, um, and I'll use Pebble Mine, for instance, because they're kind of the, the, the poster child for, for this uh, initiative. You know, why is Pebble Mine being, you know, uh, valued at a dollar sixty an ounce, a dollar ninety an ounce in the ground, and other gold mines are being valued as like two hundred dollars an ounce? You know, like what's the difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just gold, right? Well, everything lies in the yeah. probability of extraction, right? So the probability of mm -hmm. extraction is is the number one metric in valuing um, um, Alaskan gold reserves. The more likely it is to come out of the ground, the more valuable it is. But what happens if we right. take that valuation away? Like, what if we if we take if we take away that that one metric, or we don't make that metric the single most important? What if it's just gold? You yeah. know, all gold is fungible. So if we have a gold in the yeah. ground in Alaska, why is one mine's gold uh, more valuable than other another mine's gold? No, I was gonna say. So how do you address the question that kind of comes to me naturally, mm. which is like, what if you're wrong? And you don't have that much gold yeah. in the ground, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, like, what does that do to the value of the token? And how do you ever even know that yeah. if you don't let out and eventually extract it? Like, how do you know that the token is actually worth yep. the value that is assigned to it? Yeah, no, I and mean, then it's a good question. I mean, so so we are reliant on these, you know, the 43101 reports. Um, and so... Um, okay. Right. And so everything is, you know, that's how this is done. We have um, Arctic Digital Mining will create our own kind of NI43101 for tokenized gold. So we will basically take, um, you know, the reports that a gold mine will give us and then we'll put it into our own formula. And then we'll we'll be able to tell w how much of that gold is then tokenizable. Yeah. So it won't be like a simple one to one. Right. So we won't say, oh, you have two million ounces in a reserve. You get two million tokens. It'll be less than that. It'll be yeah. it'll be designed to protect the investors. 
but I mean, I guess the same question I can throw back to, you know, traditional gold investors who, who buy an ETF, who believe that the gold that they're buying is really held in a vault and that, you know, it hasn't right. been, you know, oversubscribed or, um, you know, that, that it really does, it really is backed by what it is. Um, you know, we've, there's yeah. been a lot of uh, occasions where gold has been moved from one vault to another overnight under the cover of darkness. Um, you know, where people thought their gold was being held and it wasn't there. Um, so there's an inherent risk in investing in gold, no doubt. Um, but we actually think that that with, you know, geologists like yourself who have run these reports, who have, you know, there's a, tons of credible groups out there who can, who will stand by their reporting. Um, and, you know, we'll let the, uh, the science of geology take over and, and, and determine how much gold is really there. Is there a, a, a calculation component, Pete, to this in terms of like, what is the value of not disturbing the earth? Right. Right. What is the value that is attached to that in combination with the value of gold? So, I mean, great question. I mean, that, that's that, one of the most exciting parts about this is that there is such an opportunity for price discovery because this is a new, mm -hmm. um, this is an entirely new asset, right? So this entirely new right. asset will be priced somewhere between, you know, um, you know, a dollar in the ground uh, to the price of extraction, right? So, so we don't know exactly, you know, what the value, of, uh, where this is going to, uh, you know, be priced at. My my gut reaction is to think that it's going to start out somewhere around one percent of the spot price of gold, so around twenty dollars yeah. an ounce. You know, and by no means are we saying that we are equating the the value of gold that's still in the ground to gold that's out of the ground because there's you know a lot of process that yep. has to go through that. But it, it's it's not worth right. nothing, and that's where this gets really right. interesting. Is that that you know because I I believe the gold mining industry is failing to recognize this tokenized uh, alternative, and I think once it starts mm -hmm. to embrace it and say, well, wait a minute, if we know the gold is there. And this is a viable option of just tokenizing it and leaving it there. Well, then we'll just see where this yeah. stuff starts to price out, and and all of that is going to be based off of demand. And so, so yeah. in the conversations that we've had with you know investors, with family offices, with anybody that we think would be interested in this type of investment, you know, the the response has been overwhelmingly positive, and for a lot of reasons. One is that there's a lot of groups out there that never had um, the opportunity to invest in gold just because of the negative environmental, you know, um, optics surrounding it, right? They have really strong mm -hmm. ESG uh, directives. And so gold is just not part of their portfolio. Well, you know, university endowments, you know, for one is, is you know, would be a perfect example of that. So this is now going to give people who have a, a strong ESG directive an opportunity to own gold. Uh, you know, we're going to open it up to, you know, the, the next generation of investors. My kids are far more environmentally sensitive, you know, than, than I ever was. Um, and the next generation of investors are, it will not support gold in the West. They won't support gold unless, of course, um, it has a digital component and it has, you can prove that it, it's got a, um, you know, there's a social or environmental benefit to it. I mean, my gosh, like if I go out and buy a micro uh, brew, you know, I get my favorite micro beer, it, it, there, everything on it will say like, you know, every beer you drink is, you know, we'll plant a tree, right? There's got to be like some social yeah. cause or something involved, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with any sort of, you know, purchase, uh, the next generation, they just get involved with stuff like that. So, so we, we do believe that, um, you know, that, that the, that this this ESG impact, this environmental impact, um, will will actually bring in a whole new investment class. And so, so what Thank value you. is that? You know, the value of proposition of keeping it in the ground as opposed to extracting it. We're going to let the market decide. And I guess the one thing to be clear yeah. on this is that is that we're not we're not saying that the gold is never going to come out of the ground. What we're saying is that we're, yeah. there is a way for us to monetize it both the um, gold miner and the investor to take advantage of this this current state from exploration uh, to extraction. There is a way to actually use it, monetize it, and, and actually put a utility on it um, while it's still on the ground. And I think the market and the industries are, are both, um, you know, overlooking that. So that's an important point. So you're not 
this doesn't turn into like a model that is essentially a conservation play where people buy these in order to keep you mm -hmm. from eventually mining gold. Yep. Yep. Right? It, it's a transition um, financing functionality, essentially, that helps capture you before. Okay. Yep. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, and the thing is, is that the people, you know, at some point we envision that the price of gold, that the price of, we call it the gig token, G-I-G, -G, gold in the ground. So the price of the gig okay. token, that as, as that price goes higher, we believe that the um, the the incentives to extract will go lower, so they'll be inversely proportionate, right? So all of a sudden, if a miner can, you know, who's currently being priced at twenty dollars an ounce, you know, can sell it for fifty dollars an ounce, um, I think that the idea that that as the it'll be really attractive to to these Alaskan gold miners to just sell their their to, their gold in a tokenized form, um, and and then the mm -hmm. owners of this gold. Can then we will have a governance system in place of the you know the token holders who can then have a say in, in whether or not they want to extract it or not. Yeah, that's such a cool concept because I know as as a geo you know and having of course at Prospector like one of our largest data sets is forty three one hundred ones and mm -hmm. it's it's always so frustrating for companies when they've gotten especially to like a proven resource you know they got a really high level of confidence in what they have and yet. Oftentimes, just because of market dynamics or other factors, like they still can't raise the last money they yeah. need in order to be development and, and exploitation or production. Yep. Um, yep. Or they just don't see the value, you know, from the market for a variety of reasons. And so I wonder, like, so obviously you guys are focused on gold. Like, why does this work for gold and not everything else also? Yeah, no, great question. And the reason is, is because going back to the earlier point is the gold lack of utility. Mm -hmm. Every other, you know, mineral coming from the ground um, is extracted for its industrial application, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Copper, silver, gas, oil, all of it is only as good as, as what you can use it for. Mm -hmm. Gold is unique in that we've accepted this as, a, as purely a store of value. And mm -hmm. so because it, we, we don't have the industrial application, we don't need to extract it. Okay. And so, yeah. And so that's, so that's one of the thing, unique propositions about it. It's only gold. Now we're only doing Alaska. And so the only, the reason we're doing that is one is that there's a ton of gold in Alaska. And so we can, we can make this, uh, turn this into a, a, a multi-billion dollar industry just with the gold in Alaska. Um, and moreover, um, you know, it, Alaska as, as last we checked is still part of the United States and yeah. still falls under, you know, the SEC um, you know, our, our military, you know, it's protected land. Um, and so we don't have to worry about, you know, um, I mean, we always want to worry about, uh, you know, uh, mining, uh, illegal mining activities, but it's really hard to do illegal mining in, in Alaska. Whereas places like, you know, Peru, where there's, you know, a ton of, uh, you know, foliage and rainforest and all that stuff, like you, you just can't protect that land. But we know we can protect Alaska. Yeah. Um, third, is that Alaska um, tugs on the heartstrings of investors across the world. Right. Um, people have a, have a genuine interest in seeing Alaska, um, not necessarily being protected, it's not the right word, but just you know, used responsibly. It's a beautiful place. There's beautiful people up there. Um, and you know, places like Pebble Mine make international news because of, of where it's located and, and you know, what's at stake. And so, so this this idea really pulls on the heartstrings of uh, of investors. They they understand it, and you know, because in, in Nevada, you know, where where it's so conducive to mining, you know, I, I don't we don't feel like this would have the same the same type of optics. Um, and and I think there are, you know, I am very pro mining. So okay. you know, I'm the first one to say like you know, you know. I, I'm fully aware of all the technology we have and everything that we use, you know, comes from mining. Um, and so, but we should do it responsibly and we should do it in the right places. And so not every place is, is really conducive for mining. So this gives us that opportunity to, you know, select these, the, the right places. So Alaska seems to be perfect for this. And then lastly, you know, um, there's a, a large um, native population in Alaska, the Alaskan <laughs> native corporations. Um, you know, play a, play a large role in what goes on in Alaska. They are sitting on um, 44 million acres of land and they're sitting on millions of ounces of gold. 
in mm-hmm. which they have had no real responsible way of monetizing it. Mm-hmm. And so we believe that that um, bringing them into this, and I, I'm, I'm anticipating that they would play a significant part in, in uh, this model, um, not only in, um, in being able to monetize their own gold reserves, but being able to then participate in the conservation of the land that's been tokenized. Um, and so like this has a, you know, a real strong environmental social impact. And I think it's going to have an enormous uh, financial impact, both for the Alaskan gold miners and for the, you know, the next generation of investors who have an opportunity now to participate in an entirely new asset class. One of the things that I find so interesting is uh, my co-founder, John God, who he made a comment on one of our monthly mining roundups that. You know, we track every publicly traded asset, right, in the mining space on Prospector. And disproportionately, um, mining and exploration companies are focused on gold, even though mm-hmm. the world needs critical minerals for all of these urban economy initiatives. You know, it's like, but gold continues to have a huge investor class that's focused on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. but also the same environmental footprint in many cases as minerals that will then also help us move forward to you know a low carbon economy. So if we're going to, we all acknowledge that there is environmental impact, it has to be responsibly managed and use best in class practices, right? But if you're going to impact the earth, like this is a cool way to maybe minimize the impact <laughs> for gold. Which exactly right same positive impact as a lot of other metals that we we desperately need to come into the supply chain for for some of these efforts yep yep yeah no absolutely and i mean that's that's you so 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 you know we have these um you know uh uh what do you call polymatic mines right so so you know there there's going to be opportunities that when you're dealing you know when you're mining for copper that there's going to be gold you know mixed in with that too right yeah. So, you know, so that it, it's not to say that, uh, you know, that that gold is there and it won't come out. Um, but yeah, if we can limit the amount of, of unnecessary mining, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think we can all agree that that's, that, that, that would probably be best. And I think this is a great way to do this, right? I mean, we can't ask Pebble Mine and say, you know, I know that you guys spent hundreds of millions of dollars in exploration, but uh, you know we're just we can't help you here. Sorry, right? You know, like that's that that can't be the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know and but in the same sense, do we really want them to mine just for the gold? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, so so I, this is a, a a great bridge to answer that question. Now I probably should say in full disclosure that I am a, uh, a you know an investor in Pebble Mine. I you know <laughs> I fell in love with the company five years ago when I first started reading about them. And um, and so, you know, I, I, I am a stockholder in it. But uh, uh, that being said, I do think that they're the poster child for for what we're doing. And mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I believe that a lot of Alaskan gold mines, um, if, if our initiative, this idea can take hold, we're going to find that a lot of Alaskan gold mines are horribly mispriced. Well, I just you know, fascinating. I mean, we talk a lot on this podcast and, and at the company about you know, the industry needs new models. It needs new ideas, it needs to play around and with well. things and see how we can innovate. So kudos to you guys for, for trying something new and really excited to kind of follow it and see see how it goes. And as you're doing all of this, we always ask our, our guests at the very end, um, if you could wave your magic wand and change one thing about the mining industry, what would you change? Mm. Um what would I change? I would change, you know, I, I would change the, the narrative, Same. you know, I mean, I, honestly, like it's such a, it's such an unfair assessment of the mining, you know, industry. The, everything that we do comes from mining. Every, you know, the, 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 the ability for us to have this Zoom conversation wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for mining. The, the problem with the mining industry is that the mining industry has allowed other people to tell their story for them. Sure. And, 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 and the mining uh, industry needs to get out ahead of this. And I think it was, it, it, it was a podcast that you guys did not too long ago, uh, not in my backyard, maybe. Um, yep. Right. And maybe. there was one of your guests who said, who said something about along the lines of, 
you know, pharmaceutical companies, when they advertise, they advertise people playing outside and how happy they are. When, mm -hmm. when, when the mining industry does, you know, advertises, they show, you know, a bulldozer knocking over a tree and it's like, like, why, why are we doing this? Yeah. And so, so there, the, if I could change anything, I would, cha I would, I would take control of the narrative mm -hmm. and I would start letting people know the, how important it is that, that mining, um, you know, we need this. And, and the, the world needs this and we need to do it responsibly. And, and the other thing too is like, don't you, aren't we, aren't we all better off having the most responsible miners in the world doing this as opposed to, you know, third world countries using child labor. And like, I mean, like how disingenuous is this that we will say, we're not going to mine up in Alaska because we don't want to do this, but we'll, we're going to allow people to use child laborers in the Congo and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and just so we can have cheap copper. Like right. it's, it's, it's so absurd and it's so glaringly disingenuous. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I, I should probably start going back to my uh, other drink now. No, you got me all worked up. So spicy, <laughs> spicy tequila. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You're going to get me worked up on this, Emily. But yeah, so what? Okay. That, that's what I changed. Yeah. No, I, I I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a huge champion of, you know, I think we need to, we need to change the narrative. One of the ways that we change the narrative is by doing things differently, right? And not just doing things the same way the industry them for the last several decades and expecting for people right. to see us as different and yeah. innovative and, you yeah. know, yeah. thinking. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, cheers to yeah. that. And thank you again so much for coming on the rocks. And uh, again, really yeah. excited to, to follow along with your adventure. Yeah, we will keep you posted on it. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. It's been All great. Right. Great getting to talk to you. Cheers.